Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. Today, I'd like to talk about how to create this, which is like a really beautiful sort of like quote unquote museum type gallery, uh, rock for a real looking morph. Um, and we're going to look at, into, how, you know, how to set up the simulation, how to set up the render and take it through finish. All right, so let's go ahead and jump straight into Houdini and we'll start talking about this. All right, guys, so I've got this set up already um, built out, but I'm going to rebuild it with you all. I was just testing to see, like, to just make sure that, you know, what I'm going to talk about makes sense. So you want to drop down a, a geometry node. And on the geometry node, we're going to start with with a simple um, with a simple rock and I'm gonna provide this asset for you guys on the um, assets folder here it's just a nature rock that I downloaded from um, bridge mega scans so just be wary like this is not a commercial asset this is basically just a, for to show you guys how this is gonna work out so if you drop down a file node and you hit here, you navigate into the assets and then you want to pick uh, lot zero. And then I like to drop a UV quick shade afterwards so that I can just like load the alembic at uh, the albedo, um, which is just the diffuse pass for what the texture looks like. Um, that way I can just double check that it's working properly. Then you want to drop down a torus um, and a camera. The camera is just straight up view. If you if you visualize it here, I have a rotate. I have it like a height of twelve with these rotations on it, and then on my viewport, I just left it to the default. So nothing fancy, nothing changed here. It's just that camera. And then you want to drop down a torus with this size. If you want to do it the same way as I as I did, but it really doesn't matter. You can just drop down a torus, control the size, and the radius is going to control like how big you want this part to be. The radius, but the radius basically controls the points that we're gonna scatter inside of it. Um, so if we make the radius bigger, we're just gonna have more rocks, and then. On the points from volume, the point separation controls, you know, how many points we have there. So if we make this 0.5, then there's going to be less rocks. 0.2 gives you this amount. If we connect this into this copy to points, you will notice that there all of the rocks are basically the same. So it's pretty uniform. And, you know, instead of using LUT0, I'm just going to do for... Lot 4, which is like lower resolution, and it's just going to load a little quicker. So then you want to drop down an attribute randomize and name the attribute p-scale. Very simple. Just drop down an attribute randomize and the attribute name. We want to make it the p-scale. And you will notice that now we have random rocks from a value of 0 to a 1. And then I'm going to do an attribute randomize again. And this is going to be this one right here, which is our rotation. So we name this rock and we make our dimensions four. Now they're fully randomized rocks. Then here I'm randomizing the color. So we drop down a color node and we just say, okay, I want this color to be random. Boom. Now we get random rocks, um, random color on each of the rocks. And then I'm going to drop down this attribute bop. And I will show you guys that I'm basically just do, doing a ramp of the color and outputting that to the color. So that said, we can basically delete all of the nodes that I had in here for the demonstration. And these are the ones that we just created. So we'll do an attribute bop. We'll connect it here. And we'll do a attribute, I mean a ramp. And on this ramp, we want to collect the color here and here, and now we have a gray grayscale value color. Um, and I like to turn off the UV quick shade now so that I can really see my gradient color propagated around the point, the rocks. Then you want to drop down an assemble. 
So the assemble is going to create packed prim primitives. So we're just packing them, but making each of them a single primitive so that we can drive this through our rigid body simulation. And then you want to hit this and say, I want the CD color, the color attribute, the CD attribute, the color attribute to be transferred onto our packed uh, primitives. Now in this attribute VOP, I'm just doing a CD and calling that attribute XD. What does that mean? Let me show you guys. Um, so we'll get back to this one in a second, but we're just gonna rebuild this section here so you guys understand. Um, the first thing that you wanna do is drop down and add. And this add is basically just one point. So if we drop down and add, we come here, and then we say add and add one point in like basically zero axis. So if it's right here. It's that blue thing here. Um, middle click, you'll see that you have one point. And then you drop down a null and name it anything you want. So out point attract, because I want all the rocks to be attracted to that one point. Then we're going to do an attribute bob. I mean a dot net. On our dot net, we're going to connect this which is our rocks and we're going to do a packed and a rigid body solver. So you just say, um, this is our first context geometry, which is our rocks. Now we have the rocks. Then we want the collisions to be convex hull, create convex hull per set of connected primitives. And then we're going to do a, a, um, point attract or pop attract and we want this to be point and the out point attract is going to be what's going to attract them so basically they're all going to be attracted to this point let me just double check that's what i did here that is exactly what i did let me just see my forces So let's come in here and let's hit play. You want to take this thing here so it's real time. So let's go ahead and hit play and let's see what we get. Cool. So now we have this, all of these rocks that um, are going to go straight into the middle and they're all going to collide with each other and look all badass and stuff. However, like they're super uniform, right? So... I want to get a little bit of variation into what I'm seeing there. So in order to get that working, that's what the attribute VOP here is doing. So if we do an attribute VOP, very simple, just coming here. And now we have random color. So we just want to do bind export and export the color as a different attribute. So XD. XD is basically uh, going to drive a drag based on the color of all of our rocks based on the black and white value. So we do a pop drag, and then we want to do a vex expression. And we want to say air resist. And the reason why I know it's called air resist is because air resistance here is what I want to tweak. And if you, let, if you leave your mouse there, it's going to say parameter air resist. So that's the name of that attribute. And that's the parameter that I want to tweak. So if I say air resist is equal to fit01, Rand at pt num, so random between all the points and zero and three. And then I'm gonna multiply that by at xd, which is the attribute that we created. So it's going to give us random values per each of them, but then tweak that based on the color that we have on them. So now you'll see that some of the rocks have drag mainly the white ones have less drag the black ones have a little more drag um and that's how you can start to get a little bit of variation that's how i got my variation in there um i probably used a higher value i bet so let's just see what value i used here so i use 0 to 11. so now let's just connect this here and remove everything that we just did so that we don't get confused with the test and the tutorial so we do 0 to 11 
So 0 to 11 is obviously going to give us values that are a little bit more dramatic. So like all of our rocks have a little bit of a different kind of velocity onto them. And I'm happy with that. Um, so let's just go ahead and crack uh, and cache it. So drop down a file cache, cache 120 frames, which is what I initially wanted to retime. All right, so now that we have this cached, let's have a look at what we have. So now we have all these wonderful rocks doing their thing. And now I just want to do a time remap so that I'm basically um, grabbing 120 frames and um, the output is 120 and pre zigzag and post zigzag between them so that I can just have an infinite loop of like the torus to that shape and back. Um, Let's see. So it's basically going to go from one to one twenty, reaches one twenty. And then it plays in reverse. And then it does the same thing over again. Um, and then we have these two idle ones that escaped us here. But you can always do a hit this button here. And um, 3D connected objects or points. Let's see. This one and this one. Just gonna blast those two. So now we have this clean transformation between two states. And you can do that between like, you know, whatever you want. Like this could be um whatever shape you want instead of a torus, right? And it it can go in whatever direction you want. So this is this is uh, the first part, and then we're gonna unpack it. So that we can render it. Then we're going to do an attribute delete and delete the color. Let's see. Um, all right. And then we're going to do a UV quick shade to double check that our albedo pass is working. It is. And then you're going to drop down a material. Go ahead and save your project, guys, so that you know you don't forget to like save it. And then we're gonna do an RS dome and pick whichever HDRI that you guys wanna try for this. And then I drop down an RS light and I place it here, just so that I would have a little bit different reflection. So basically, my RS light is set to 100. The scale is pretty small. My dome default just an HDRI, and um, that's that. Then we have the camera. And then I drop down a grid. And if you go in here, you'll see that I have a grid. And that's it. I applied a, a, a material to the grid outside here. Material ground. So if we look from the camera. Um, let's go into our materials and have a look at what I did with the rock. So I'll recreate this material with you guys so that you understand what's going on. But first, we want to go here and say... Um, Redshift render and um, in my Redshift render, I didn't really change anything. Everything is set to default, actually. The only thing is this output that I like to do $S and $S so that it creates a folder with the same name here. And then it creates a name, which is rock blend and every frame and an EXR. Main, just my camera. We hit render view. Let's um, go into our material. And let's have a look at what I did here. All right, all right, all right. Cool, cool. 
All right, so let me turn off the ground and on the material, I'm going to delete it and create a new one. So you want to say redshift material and name it rocks and then type redshift um, RS standard material and connect it here. And with this, we're just going to get the default. Okay, so basically just a simple default. Drop down an RS texture and let's um, grab our albedo and connect our albedo into our base material color. Then you wanna hit Alt and just drag and duplicate your albedo pass. And then here we're gonna get our roughness. Then we're gonna connect our roughness into our reflection roughness. That's gonna make this non-reflective. Then after that, you're gonna duplicate it again and connect this to our displacement. And our displacement is gonna be connected to an RS bump. So you wanna connect this here and set your bump to 0 0.01 or whatever you want and connect it to the bump. Now we're gonna stop the render we're gonna come into our base, we're gonna select it, we're gonna go to Redshift, Tessellation and enable the tessellation. But you're gonna turn off the smoothing subdivision so that we can get sharp edges. Now let's come back here and let's do an RS color correct. And I'll show you guys what we're gonna do with the color correct in a second. All right, let's drop down our color correct to pretty low values. And that is the base of like the rock material that I had built. Now let's turn over grid. And let's check out the material for the grid. So the material for the grid is just a standard material, but I added a noise and bump of 0 0.01 to the noise. So let's recreate what I did with the noise. I typed R is noise. You want to connect this into the surface to visualize it. Then you want to come into the noise and you want to do like an amplitude of 0 0.01 or something like that. And a very high frequency and a little bit. Just play with this value till so you have a noise that you like. The, va the noise that I had was this, just basically tweaking this too and multiplying and adding that to a bump. And then here, just um, changing the color. That simple. Now, right now, it feels like my rocks are a little bit, um, a little bit too dark. So let me just increase the gamma on them, and something like that will do the trick. So um, let me just stop this. I hope you guys like this tutorial, and as always, guys, I will be back with more.